morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Peace, everyone. You may be seated. Well, good morning again. Here we are, Sunday morning. It ain't snowing, it ain't raining. Life is good. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. I wanted to remind everybody, today is our annual parish meeting. We are meeting via Zoom. The link for that can be found either in your bulletin that you downloaded from the website or um, online through the weekly Spark. Uh, we will begin the meeting at 11 o'clock and I expect the meeting will last only about 45 minutes because we won't be doing some of the normal things that we would do, but we will cover all the big stuff and make sure that any questions are asked. And we'll talk about how to ask questions during the annual meeting uh, via Zoom when we get up and running. I uh, want to also let you all know that on Wednesday evening, the 10th of February, our Journeys invites the youth of our parish between the ages of 10 and 18 to join them for a night of bingo. Um, we'll start with dinner at 6.30, and then at 7 p.m. we will play a couple of games of bingo, and we will close at 8 p.m. leading Compline. Um, this is open to all parish youth, 10 to 18. If you want to bring a friend, um, that's okay but I need to know who all is coming no later than that Tuesday beforehand, the 9th. So if you would like to come and, and or bring a friend, please let the office know um, by Tuesday the 9th. The Bloodmobile will be here on February 13th. There are instructions in our bulletin on how to schedule an appointment. Uh, we have traditionally been able to fill all of our appointments over the years, and we hope we are able to do so again. And then looking ahead, Shrove Tuesday this year will be a drive-through uh, Shrove Tuesday. Uh, you will be encouraged to drive up to the red doors in the parking lot, drop off last year's palms, and pick up a pancake dinner. Uh, if you would let us know you're on your way, we'll make sure that we have one that is nice and warm and ready for you. There are other announcements in here that I invite you to please look at and mark your calendars accordingly. We do have some birthdays today. We have Dean, Kathy, Haley, Charlotte, and Robert. Would you please join me in the birthday prayer? O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And there is a typo in the bulletin. Kurt and Mary received their anniversary blessing last week. But if there are any anniversaries that we missed in the bulletin, please let us know in the comments line on Facebook, and we will gladly do the anniversary blessing a little bit later in the service. Today is the last day our interim organist will be with us, at least the last day that he's scheduled to be with us. We may be able to come back another day, but Brent has been a wonderful blessing to our worship, and we are so thankful he was able to join us. And the new gentleman who will be our parish organist, Caleb Wilkening, is a student of Brent's and came to us highly recommended. Um, he served yesterday at Sabrina's funeral, and he will be a wonderful addition to our worship team. But we do want to thank Brent because through Brent's guidance, we were able to discern our next way forward with music here at Holy Spirit. And... Uh, Please, if you would leave a comment to, of best wishes for him, we would greatly appreciate it. Brent, if I could just offer a little blessing. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the, the service and ministry of Brent. That through you, we have been blessed. 
We ask that you watch over Brent as he goes forward in life and that he continues to be the inspiration for many students to come. All this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brent. Our service continues uh, inside your service bulletin. Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, one announcement I did forget. Today we welcome Vic Culp, our guest preacher. Most all of you know him. We are blessed. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 111. We will read in unison. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever.
A reading from the first book of Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom are all things and from whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Good morning. How would you react if I told you that several nights ago I had a very vivid dream? Scott Frost was holding a press conference with big news for Husker Nation. The coach said that after the frustrating pace of progress for the football program since his return, he had decided on a major course correction with dramatic changes to both the offensive and defensive schemes that were no longer producing the results expected in Lincoln. The coming season would see an almost brand new team, something much different and more successful than fans had seen for the past five years. This dream was so lifelike that I felt inspired. Could it be a sign of great things to come? And should I spread the word among a Husker faithful so longing for a turnaround? How would my message be received? With gratitude or skepticism? The question of whom to trust was a dilemma faced by the Israelites in today's reading from Deuteronomy. Moses has done his duty and is ready to pass the baton of leadership. He promises his people that God will raise up another prophet to guide them through the coming years, and it is a tumultuous time indeed. The Assyrians who have dominated the region for centuries are in a steep decline, and the Israelites have an opportunity to reestablish their kingdom, traditional culture, and religion. But their path will not be easy, since the empire will not go down without a fight. With these conditions at play, the choice of a new leader is serious business. The ability to tell the difference between a genuine prophet and a pretender could be a life or death decision for thousands, and its verification is not clear cut. As we read in the two verses that follow our passage, God may promise to smite false prophets, but doesn't commit to a timetable for doing so. Instead, God takes a proof is in the pudding approach, which leaves the Israelites hanging for a time. But time is not a luxury they have, so how will they pick the right person in the moment? Though our choices are usually far less consequential, the Israelites' predicament is like one most of us face just about every day. While we no longer use the title of prophet in any official sense, and only rarely recognize someone with a special gift for vision, we still have a need for some filter to help us find authoritative sources. The rapid rise in the number of information outlets available to us over the past 20 years has left us searching for some means to decide what, or more accurately whom, to rely on as we navigate our daily lives. In a sea of sometimes contradictory inputs and catchy images, all designed to grab our attention, what do we look for to make those important decisions? Our epistle today gives us some suggestions on where we might start. Paul lived in an era characterized by an increasing number of false prophets who often overwhelmed the ability of the common person to distinguish fact from fiction. To steer believers through this maze of false claims, Paul begins by returning to the basics of humility, reminding us that love takes us beyond human knowledge and into the embrace of God's wisdom. Those who trust solely in their own knowledge give themselves a false sense of confidence. Appreciating God's love is the true path to knowledge, which translates into our own learn, love, and concern for our neighbors and a desire to build up our communities. This love is selfless. Paul refuses to eat meat if doing so will confuse or lead others astray. And likewise, we have a responsibility to practice what the Oxford Bible describes as a self-limiting regard for others. In propping up and caring for our sisters and brothers, we build the body of Christ. By looking out for this nurturing quality in others, we begin to find those who possess the authority we seek. 
It is not always a formal position of organizational or educational status, but an air of integrity that encourages trust in character and judgment. It wasn't just his ability to cast out unclean spirits that made Jesus stand out, though that talent certainly added to his credibility. Rather, it was a combination of tone and action in his teaching that convinced the disciples of Jesus' authenticity. They weren't forced to follow him by the use of power, but instead were encouraged by an authority born of persuasion. His preaching of God's word won converts because it conveyed God conveyed God's love for them, and they came to return that love and respect. As expressed by Pastor Peter Marty, what they saw in Jesus was more than raw power. They witnessed the power of love, and in that love is the secret of the Lord's authority. Now, while none of us can strike down a false prophet or cast out demons, the good news is that love is a source of authority that is available to all of us. As we gradually emerge from the pandemic and begin to rebuild and re-energize our communities, the task will be bigger and more complex than we may currently realize. Much like the ancient prophets, leaders of all talents will be called on to deliver relief to people who have lost their bearings in all the chaos of the past year. How will we recognize these leaders? For starters, they will be the ones who are not puffed up. Like Moses, they will display a healthy amount of humility and will be eager to share the spirit that motivates them, along with responsibility and credit for a job well done. They will also sway rather than insist and will place the well-being of, uh, of others ahead of their own. Most importantly, these leaders will demonstrate a deep caring for others rooted in love, a quality that shines through in every relationship they have. And there's even better news. Not only can we find our modern prophets, but we can also fulfill Moses' wish by becoming them. The early prophets of Israel were full of flaws, but they shared a common commitment to God's word, which the people recognized and trust it. Regardless of our origins or backgrounds, each of us can inspire a similar degree of trust by displaying our love for our sisters and brothers. In doing God's work through service to others, we become what one writer described as prophets in the pews. As Christians, this is a capacity residing within all of us. Let us recognize the need and embrace the possibilities. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, please pray for Igreja Episcopal Anglican de Brazil. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, the Episcopal Church women, Diocese Women's Ministry and St. Monica's Home for Women, in the Dominican Republic, St. Ignatius Church, St. Peter the Apostle Church, St. Titus Church. In the parish cycle of prayer, vestry members, for this gathering and for all strive to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for our president, Joe Biden, our governor, Pete Ricketts, for all elected and appointed officials of the communities in which we live, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Lord, we lift up those in our congregation and those we know who are ill, especially Richard E., Dennis K., Otwin, Sean K., Matt, Lonnie, Duane, and G. Are there others? We also pray for those with special concerns, especially the Cummings family, Jackie, the Scutt family, the Gray family, Lee M., the Crawford family, the Davis family. Are there others? Lord, have compassion on those that suffer from any grief or trouble. We remember all those who have died, especially Sabrina R., Katie P., Arnie D. Are there others? Give to all the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those who serve our country at home and abroad, especially those who are deployed and in harm's way. Nate W., A.J. P. Are there others? Be with them and their families, Lord, giving them comfort and hope until they are once again reunited in peace. We ask that you watch over those who travel. Are there others? Keep them safe as only you can. We ask that you continue to pour out your blessing on those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Dean, Kathy, Haley, Charlotte, Robert R. Are there others? And those who are celebrating anniversaries, 
Are there others? I invite your prayers for intercession and thanksgiving at this time. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. You may be seated while we set the table. Lord Jesus Christ, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion together, we pray that you come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Our service continues with the great thanksgiving as found in your service bulletin. 
Please stand. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of glory and truth, we praise your holy name with thanksgiving because you sent prophets to inscribe the story of creation, to recall the shaping of your covenant with Israel, and to hold your people to account for their life in you. Those same prophets told of a day when you would restore your covenant and open wide your arms to bring your people home to you. In Jesus, we see the, those promises fulfilled. In his death and resurrection, we know our sins are forgiven and receive the promise of everlasting life with you. And so with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we join the everlasting hymn to your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, your son Jesus ate with friend and stranger, with devoted disciple and skeptical scrutinizer, with the one who would betray and the one who had denied. He made food a place to, of encounter with you. By the power of your Holy Spirit, visit your people and sanctify us in the image of your crucified Son. Through the same Spirit, make these gifts of bread and wine to be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Cleansing God. Your Son, Jesus, taught and healed as one with authority. Where your children search in vain for someone to trust, show them your face. Where your people long for one to lead or a path to follow, Send them your pillar by, of cloud by day and of fire by night. Where your church is faltering in fear and doubt, make yourself known in the ones we regard as the least of these. Usher in the day when all may taste and see the riches of your grace. In your arms of love with, will, will all the world embrace. In Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in union with the Father. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. At this time, I invite those with the fellowship cup to peel back the layer of cellophane and join me. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Peeling back the foil, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Continuing with the prayer found in your bulletin, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs>